Hello, my name is Stacy Spears and I'm with Northeast Iowa Area Agency on Aging. Today, I wanna to talk about a growing problem in the United States, scams targeting the elderly. Every year, senior citizens lose billions of dollars due to financial cons, identity theft, and fraud. While everyone is at risk of being the victim of these crimes, the elderly are especially vulnerable. Seniors are often targeted because they tend to be trusting and polite. Older people are more likely to have financial savings, to own their homes, and to have excellent credit, which makes them attractive to people looking to steal from them. Seniors are more interested in the products that con artists might be selling, such as remedies for a variety of illnesses or pills to help improve cognitive and physical functioning. Older adults are also less likely to report fraud, either because they don't know how to report it or because they're too ashamed to admit that they've been deceived. The best defense against fraud and financial exploitation is awareness. So I wanna talk about some of the most common hoaxes to look out for and give you some suggestions to help protect yourself. In government imposter scams, people pose as government officials from the IRS Social Security Administration, or Medicare, and make threatening phone calls trying to extract personal financial information. For example, someone calling from the IRS may try to notify you that you have unpaid taxes, and unless an immediate payment is made, you'll be arrested. Often these impersonators spoof the actual phone number of the government agency they claim to be with, so be aware that just because your caller ID indicates that a call is coming from a trusted business or organization, it's not always the case. Computer tech support scams prey on people's lack of knowledge about computers and cybersecurity. Scammers will call or email saying that they've noticed some technical problems with your computer or suggest that you need to upgrade your software. They may ask for remote access to your computer or ask that you download an antivirus program, which is actually malware. Once remote access has been granted or the malware has been installed, the scammer will have access to whatever information is on your computer. It's important to make sure that all computer antivirus, security software, and malware protections are up to date. Never download protection software that you haven't verified as being legitimate and never grant a request for remote access to any of your devices. Robocalls and phone scams take advantage of sophisticated phone technology to dial large number of households from anywhere around the world. Robocallers use a variety of tactics to trick their victims. For example, they may claim that the warranty in your car is expiring and that immediate payment is needed to renew it. To eliminate these calls, Register your home and cell phone numbers on the Do Not Call list at donotcall.gov. This is a free national registry designed to prohibit telemarketers from contacting you. In sweepstakes and lottery scams, con artists inform their marks that they've won a lottery or sweepstakes, but before they can claim their winnings, they need to pay a fee of some sort to cover taxes, import duties, or shipping and handling fees. Never pay a fee to collect a prize that's supposed to be free. Any sweepstakes or lottery that charges a fee to collect your winnings, even if the contest carries a legitimate name, is guaranteed to be a scam. Investment schemes are aimed at seniors who are looking to safeguard their cash for their later years. The risk-free and high return investment is an example of this type of scam. In these situations, a fraudster will advertise unrealistic high returns that can be realized with very little or no risk at all. The truth is that no investment is risk-free. Investors should be suspicious of opportunities that promise spectacular profits or guaranteed returns. If the deal sounds too good to be true, it usually is. Phishing is a type of online scam that targets consumers by sending them emails and text messages designed to look like they're coming from a company that the recipient knows and trusts, such as a bank, credit card company, or an online store. Phishing emails request personal information, 
such as a login password or social security number to verify an account, or they may ask for updated credit card information. Scammers then use this information to steal from you. Refrain from clicking on suspicious links in text messages or emails, even if they appear to come from a friend or family member, and never give out your personal or financial information. Sadly, unscrupulous people often find ways to capitalize on crisis situations for their own benefit, and the COVID pandemic is no exception. Currently, the most common hoaxes regarding COVID involve the economic impact payments and vaccinations. One of the most common stimulus check scams involves an email or text message instructing the recipient to click on a link to apply for their payment. The application then requires sensitive information, such as a social security, bank, or credit card number. These links are also likely armed with malware to gain access to the data on your device. Remember, there's no charge to receive the economic impact payments and no application is required to receive it. The IRS will not contact you by phone, email, or text message nor will they ask for your social security or bank account information. Even though COVID vaccines are free to all Americans, scammers are reaching out to seniors through texts, phone calls, email, or social media to schedule fake vaccination appointments and requiring payment. If you're being asked for money for a vaccine, you can be sure someone's trying to cheat you. Here are some additional tips to help avoid scams. Be suspicious. Whenever someone contacts you out of the blue, whether by mail, email, social media, or phone, be cautious. Take the time to check out whomever's contacting you before trusting them with any money or personal information. Monitor your credit card and bank accounts. Check your statements every month for any unauthorized charges. If you notice any suspicious credit card activity, Call your credit card company right away. For suspicious activity with your bank account, contact your bank. Protect your personal information. Shred mail, old bills, bank statements, and other documents containing personal identifying information. Never give out any personal or financial information to someone who calls or emails you. This includes your social security, Medicare, bank account, or credit card numbers. Only provide this information when you initiated the call yourself to a business that you know is legitimate. If you've been the victim of a scam, you may feel embarrassed to report the incident. However, alerting the appropriate authorities will help them take steps to minimize any potential damage and to prevent future fraud from occurring. File a complaint with the FCC. You can even do this online at FCC.gov and contact your local law enforcement center. Report any compromised financial information to the bank or credit card issuer and report compromised personal information such as Medicare, Social Security, or health insurance ID numbers to the appropriate organization. If you would like any more information about financial schemes targeting the elderly, or if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to your local area agency on aging.